aerial rider, I would put in a different class of a bike. Um, majority of the time when I'm riding the aerial rider, I'm not in the bike lane. And the reason why I'm not in the bike lane is because I got enough speed that I feel like I don't need to be in the bike lane. You know, I feel like I'm, I feel like I got too much speed for the bike lane. I would classify the aerial rider as like a completely different bike. And for the price, I'm just gonna keep it real. For the price, yo, two thousand dollars you get with the aerial rider, it's a really good deal. I mean, for for as fast as you can go, it could basically be used as a motorcycle almost. Because once again, it's still a bike. You can still bring it indoors, you know. Now, one thing I do, there there's big differences between the aerial rider and the other bikes. When I say the other bikes, I'm mainly talking about the fat tire bikes, which is the Hemiway and the um, the Rad Power bike. The Rad Power bike, I really like to sit on the bike. You're sitting in like this upright position. It kind of reminds me of riding like an Amsterdam style bike, right? Um, if you go look at them Amsterdam style bikes, people are usually sitting up in an upright position. Their spine is straight, right? On the aerial rider, you can't be you got to be bent over like you're on a motorcycle um so that's the big difference with that once again it's 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 more of a personal preference it's not like oh the rad way is a bad way to ride a bike or the aerial rider is a bad way to ride a bike the aerial rider bike it can go much faster and with those faster speeds you need um with those much faster speeds you need more stability and to get more stability on a bike you need to get closer to the front frame of the bike versus the rad power bike and it tops out at like 20 20 miles an hour 22 miles an hour i mean i have that bike hacked to go 25 miles an hour but i don't think it actually goes 25 miles an hour um it maybe it has something to do with the motor maybe the motor it has like seven thousand miles on that bike so maybe the motor is getting old or something like that i don't know if it has seven thousand but it has like i think six thousand or something could be the motor is getting a little old and it also could be that um maybe tire pressure has a lot to do with that the proper air air pressure otherwise you're not going to be able to achieve those higher speeds i think you sold me on the area rider i've been shopping at a gas pump moped okay the thing about a gas moped versus the area rider i think most people who are looking at a gas moped they're not considering a bike like like the area rider okay that they're, they're not, they're not, um, they're not looking at a bike like the Ariel Rider. Like, okay, I, I like the Ariel Rider because it's faster, but I don't necessarily care so much about the speed. I really like the Hemiway bike. It's a different bike. Like on the Hemiway bike, I feel like I can just get away with running more red lights okay, versus the Ariel Rider. The Ariel Rider, like, I usually don't run red lights on it because the takeoff from the red light is so freaking fast that I don't want to run a red light and take off that fast versus the Hemiway bike. Like I'll stop at a red light, look both ways, don't see anything coming and then I'll run it because I feel different running a red light on the Hemiway bike because it's not that fast. It's not that powerful versus that REO rider, yo. I mean, REO rider, it actually feel like I'm for real, like did a damn crime. You know what I'm saying? Um, but once again, the, the Aereo Rider is more expensive, okay? It's definitely more expensive. It's also, I don't think it's available right now. Last time I checked, it, the website, it wasn't available. So, like, you couldn't you couldn't actually, like, get it. Um, the Hemiway bike is definitely cheaper. But once again, like, the Hemiway bike is a different bike. Like, it, it definitely got the shocks. Um, they're both, both bikes are very smooth to ride. The, the Rad Power Bike is the bumpiest rod. That's the bumpiest bike, yo. That bike is so freaking bumpy. Like, I be riding that bike and it be throwing me all over the place, yo. Because, it, but it don't have any shocks. Like, what, what do you expect? I live in a small, I live in a small town. No, to stop it, no, it don't matter. Oh yeah, you live in a small town. How long does it take to charge the area? The area bike, that's a good question. I don't exactly know how long it takes to charge it. Like, I'm gonna keep it real. Like, I, I really don't know because, oh shit, sorry. I really don't know how, how long it takes to charge an aerial bike because I, I've never really timed it. And I've, 
every time I've ran it completely down, right, I've never exactly, like, timed it, you know? Usually, whenever I'm riding the bike in the afternoon, in, in the mornings, what I'll do is, if I'm not riding an aerial bike rider, or any bike, if I'm out riding at, like, 7 in the morning, I'll ride it and maybe go back home at, like, 10. Usually, when I get back home at 10, like, the bike is not completely dead. But let's say it's on two bars, right? If the bike's on two bars, like, I'll just remember to put this one on charger at 10 a.m. And, of course, I'll leave out riding another bike. So when I leave out riding that other bike, um, I'll just remember, oh, it's 2 o'clock. Remember, I put the other the other bike on charger at 10, so it's been charging for four hours. Like, that's kind of how I um, play it. Another thing with bikes, I'm going to tell you all something that's real important about bikes, so especially delivery people, especially delivery people. Yo, y'all need to know this. You for real need to know this. Okay, you need to learn about battery charge cycles, okay? So a battery charge cycle is like this. One charge cycle is when you completely drain the battery, okay? Now, the, be- the most ideal way to ride a bike or, or most ideal way with batteries is you want to go down to like 20%. And then you want to charge it up to 80%. This is really good for batteries. Now, if you charge it to 100%, no big deal. But whenever you charge a battery from zero to 100%, when you first charge it up, right, the first like 20 minutes is adding like way more juice, right? And then from 20% to like 40%, it slows down a little bit. And then from 40% to like 80%, it slows down. But from 80% to like 90%, it gets even slower. And then from 90% to 100%, it just takes forever, right? Like it takes forever. So ideally, ideally, if you are running around on the city doing deliveries on bikes, this is what I figured out from experience, okay? I've been giving folks these golden nuggets all the time. If you're running around doing deliveries on bikes, it is the best to run the battery down to like, you know, 20%, run it down to 40% and then charge it, right? If you charge it at 20%, it's gonna charge from 20% to 80% faster than it would charge from 80% to 100%. Now let that sink in for a second. If you wait till the battery is down to 20% and you charge it, it'll charge from 20% to 80% faster than it'll charge from 80% to 100%. So when you know these two things, what you do is you do what I do. You just ride the bike, pull out the bike, you ride it down to 20%, you put it on charger. And after it's been on charger for a couple hours, you pull it back out and you keep switching them every, every, every time. Cause that way they're getting them the fastest charge speed. Now what you can do, you can get a fast charger. I'm not a fan of fast chargers because fast chargers always degrade the battery. Any fast charger degrades the battery. Even a fast charger on an iPhone, it will degrade the battery faster. So that's just one thing to throw out there. Now, if you're the type of person, you're using it for deliveries and, you know, you, 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 you're making money with it and you run into batteries, it, maybe, it, maybe it's not so bad that you're burning up batteries, you know? But me, I would like to not, like, you know, kill the batteries too much. That's like the most expensive part of the bike. You're right about the Class X and the Escape. Two different ways to ride. Very, very two different ways to ride, y'all. Very two different ways to ride. So that's why when people say that, like, oh, you like one bike more than the other bike. Well, I kind of do, but, like, I kind of like them for different reasons, yo. I kind of like them for different reasons. Like, the Aerial Rider, it, it, it's got a, definitely got a more of a motorcycle feel. Not a moped, a motorcycle. The Hemiway is more like a, um, I want to say the Hemiway is more feels like a, it more feels like a, a moped, right? It's definitely not as fast, but both bikes are faster than the um, Rad Power bike. Like both bikes are faster than the Rad Power bike. Now, the, I can tell you some more things about the Rad Power bike. I, I may actually dub this part of my video because people may actually like this. This is some really good content if you look at the bikes. So the thing with the Rad Power bike, I don't know if this is true. Well, I think it is true. But basically, a lot of people are saying that on YouTube, a lot of people are saying that the Rad Power bike is um, 
is not a 750, right? They're saying it's a 500. Well, you know what? It might be a 500. If it is a 500, so what? Like, it's, it's, it's good enough for what it is. It's not a speed bike. It's more of a cargo bike. You know, it's more of a cargo bike. So that's why, that's why I would say that, yeah, that's why I would say it's not... That's why you don't need to go that fast. It's like when you got a, a dump truck, do you need to go zero to 60 in three seconds in a dump truck or would you rather do that in a sports car, you know? So it's kind of like overkill. Okay, y'all want to talk about range here. Okay, range is going to be very, very, range is going to be all over the place, okay? This is what I got to say about range, okay? What if I told y'all on the Hemiway bike on the Rad Power bike and also the Area All Rider bike. What if I said they all get the same range? Okay. What if I said that? What if I said that the Rad Power bike has better range than the than the Area All Rider and um, the Hemiway Escape? What if I said that? Okay, I'm not exactly saying that, but what I'm what I'm gonna say is this right here. This is what I figured out well, with the the Area All Rider. By the Oriol Rider bike being so fast, right? By being so fast like that, whenever you're at a light, whenever you take off, you're taking off faster. By you're taking by you taking off faster at that light, you're using less electric. You're using more electricity just to take off faster, right? Meaning that you may not be going 36 miles an hour. You may be going 20 miles an hour, but you're still using all of that, that initial juice to take to take off. So the Ariel Rider, I, I've I've ridden it like I've ridden it 10 miles on a windy day, full speed, no pedaling, and I've got it down to like half bars, right? Now, it's not much different than any other of the bikes I have. On the Hemiway bike, I took it out on a windy day, right? very windy day get 10 miles on the bike and then it's it's um you know two bars now when i say it's two bars that's very um that's very up in the air because when i say it's two bars that's two bars from riding if you actually get off the bike cut it off and wait for like five minutes that two bars will actually go back up to four bars you know so all of these bikes do this all of them do this. They all, they're very tricky with the, the battery, the battery meter. I've actually seen videos out there that said that the Ariel Rider bike does not like um, do the funny stuff with the battery. Um, I definitely got it to do funny stuff with the battery. The other day I was riding and it said four bars and it went all the way down to one bar. And I was like, damn, I'm far from the house, yo. I need to start pedaling. And then I like stopped to get off for a delivery and then got back on the bike, cut the bike back on and the battery, um, um, the battery went back to like three bars or something. And I was like, wow, can you put the Ariel, Ariel rider on mini bus racks? No, you can't put the Rad Power bike, the Hemiway, or the um, the Ariel rider. You can't put any of these bikes on the bus because they're all fat tires and the tire is just too fat for the bus. One thing I figured out, it doesn't really matter about the size of the battery because doesn't matter about the size of the battery if the bike is faster, right? It's kind of like it doesn't matter if you have faster internet if you're sending larger files, you know? If you're sending larger files, like, oh, yeah, you got 5G now, but now you're sending files five times the size of the files last time. Well, so what if your internet is five times faster? Now your files are five times. Like, that's kind of how the bikes are. Now, there is one exception. There's one exception, okay? There's one really big exception with the, uh, you say smoke break, it's funny. One huge exception with the Ariel Rider bike. If you actually pedal on the Ariel Rider bike, if you actually pedal on the bike, you can get close to 50 miles range. Okay? You can get close to 50 mile range if you're pedaling in the way in that, how, how you're able to pull that off is it's pretty unique because how it works when you're pedaling on the, the aerial rider bike when you're just pedaling on the bike it doesn't um when you're pedal when you stop at a red light and you start pedaling on the bike you are moving the bike once you start the bike moving then the pedal assist kicks on 
So what the pedal assist is doing is it, it's not starting from a dead stop. Starting from a dead stop is the hardest on, on, on anything because it's a dead stop and it has to use all that initial battery to get the car moving, get the bike moving. And then once the bike's moving, it's like, it's not so hard to, to keep it going because it's already rolling, you know? So that's another thing with, um, it's another thing with the, with the aerial rider bikes. If, if you can, um, if you pedal, oh my gosh, the range you can get on the aerial rider will, will just be insane. Like you can literally deliver all day and just charge the bike once a day if you were pedaling. But when you have that much speed, why when you have that much speed and power? Like, why do you want to be pedaling all the time? You know, when you got that much speed and power, don't you want to be using some of that speed and power? It's kind of like buying a GoPro that, that shoots in five, shoots in, um, shoots at, um, you know, five, uh, you know, 4K. And you, you buy the GoPro and you shoot in that 720p. Like, why even buy the latest GoPro if you're going to use the old settings, you know? Neo stop, dead stop. I don't know. Does it charge the battery when you pedal the bike? No, it does not charge the battery when you pedal the bike. No, it does not. It does not at all. Some bikes do. That would be a mid mid drive bikes. Some mid drive bikes have regenerative braking. What a mid drive bike is? A mid drive bike is the motor for the bike is near the pedals no it's near the pedals like where the feet are hub motor bikes the motor is in the back wheel and that's it's a, a hub motor because it's in the hub but the other bikes are um mid-drive bikes which i'm not a big fan of mid-drive bikes there's a lot of reasons i'm not a fan of mid-drive bikes mid-drive bikes are typically a lot more expensive than hub motors a mid-drive bike puts a lot of pressure on the chain and if you break a break the chain on a mid drive on a mid drive bike, you can't ride the bike. Versus if you if you're out riding on a, on a hub motor bike and you break the chain, you can still ride it with electricity if it has a throttle. So that's the difference between um, you know, um, gear gear motors and, and the, the the hub motors in the back. The gear motors are just they're more expensive and they're just more more maintenance. I would say. Hub motors are good, yo. Hub motors are really good. They're strong. Have you ever ran out of juice? A few times. On um, the red power bike, that's the bike that's, that's dangerous to run out of juice on because I can't pedal it. Um, but the other bikes, if I run out of, if I get down to one bar and I'm far, the next option is just to pedal home and in, in, in one, at one assist and just pedal. Can you bring the fat tire bikes into BART? Yes. Yes, yes, you can take you can definitely take them on BART. The thing about taking them on BART that can kind of be um, a pain, which you know, you can still do it, but it's just something you gotta go through, is in the city, all the BARTs, the elevators don't work, and you typically wanna take the elevator when you're taking a bike like that. And then also in the city, a lot of the elevators have elevator attendants. So when you get on the elevator, there's someone sitting in a chair on the elevator. And they take up all this space and it's like it's just hard to get a bike in because you know there's a person sitting in the freaking chair in there you know riding the elevator so people won't take a piss in the elevator it's just like i don't know it's bay area shit. 